this is welcoming you to our person of interest okay today i have in the house Akparawa Ephraim Yayan. He is from a non-local government area in Akwaibum State. He was a custom officer and currently he is the Honorable Commissioner for Works Akwaibum State. Also worthy of note is the fact that my person of interest is the Chairman Board of Trustees Transformation Initiative. He is going to tell us about what is going on with that group and what they are doing currently now. This interview is very necessary because more than before, young people are demanding that governments be transparent, be accountable. And so it is only apt and necessary that we have this very important person in our state come talk to us about what is happening with our governance. You're welcome to Person of Interest and Passion TV. The comments box is for you. So send us your reactions and questions. Thank you very much for joining us and welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Very well then. Um, this is the internet TV and so, so many people out there do not know you like we know you back here at home. So we'd like to begin like this. Please, tell us who you are. Who were you before the appointments? How is your family? What kind of family do you have? What were you doing before you were appointed the Honorable Commissioner of Kwaibom States? Well, um, let me start this way. My name is in full will be that the Mbom Parawa gave me the title of power. But I was born on a power. Okay. And my real name is Ephraim Akparawa Eiyan. Those are reflected in my certificates. And when mm. Mbom gave me an Akparawa, so I am Akparawa Ephraim Akparawa Eiyan. The only man with two Akparawas in the entire world. You have to remain young forever. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, um, I was born some 52 years ago in the Kodabira, in my little hospital. I kept then. But from Unadugu government and uh, went through the necessary tutelage of going to primary school in my neighborhood. Then went to a Chinan Institute, from there went to School of Basic Studies in Akampa, went to University of Ibadan. I did chemistry in my first degree. Okay. And then um, did NYC in Lagos and thereafter uh, joined the Nigerian Customs Service, rose through the ranks to the management cadre. And sometime in 2013, uh, the governor of Akwaibom said today was appointed secretary to Akwaibom State Government. Okay. Having been executive director of the bank and we haven't been friends and brothers. And he came here and when I came visiting him, and uh, he had the intention of contesting the election. And you know in Akwaibom certain decisions were assumed to have been taken and everywhere I went, they told me who is Sudom, he was strange, he was new, nobody knew him. And that rose the curiosity. The question I asked, was it a crime for those of us to have gone out mm. to sit in a pasture? So is it that when we return, we are no longer from there? Okay. That's what drove my passion to form the Transformation Initiative. What did I do with the group? Was to take the story of Udom Gabriel Emmanuel to those who didn't know him. I happen to be one of few privileged people who know him so well. And I came telling them that you would be very lucky to have him as your governor. Okay, sir, just, just before we go talking about the governor, because trust me, we will, we are still on the subject of knowing what you were doing before you were appointed as commissioner. All right, let me get back there. Yes, um, I joined the Nigerian Customs Service on August 30th, 1991. Okay. And uh, 1990, and I rose through the rank, like I said, I was in the Customs Service until 6th of July. 2015 when I was appointed commissioner. You know that question was necessary because there are so many young people today who are just waiting behind and following some of our commissioners hoping that one day they will just be swept into office and they really do nothing with their lives. So I'm glad you put that right that you were actually putting your life to use before you were appointed as honorable commissioner. Let me also clarify this. If you've not had opportunity of doing some other thing if you are swept, which I don't think exists, into mm. office, there's every tendency that you won't perform. Mm. Now your exposure, your experience will come to bear in your ability to do what you're doing. If you ask anybody I've known in the customs, and I'm saying it proudly, I've never been to a place that I didn't turn around. Mm. I've never sat on a chair, no matter how dry it was. God had given me that grace that we will make things work. You can find this out from my colleagues. 
And so coming to Ministry of Works, it was not strange. Even though people said, oh, he was not an engineer. Look, as a commissioner, you don't need to be a professional. It might be doctors. All you need to do is to have management capacity and strategy. You are managing the professionals. And anybody with intellectual powers can manage the professionals. So what was my job as commissioner was to go to Ministry of Work, get the professionals to do what was right and deliver the right result at the right time, mm -hmm. which my training in the customs had prepared me for. Okay. And let me tell you one of the things that helped me while I was in the customs, there was no question of it's not possible. Okay. If you are trained in where we were trained, all things were possible. All that was required was you to create the world with to get those things possible. So when I got to acquire them, said got appointed as commissioner, uh, you know, there are a lot of things that thought they thought it was not possible. And um, I didn't feel that way. I believe that change is possible if you put your mind to it. And we began to do things differently. And most of the things we were doing, they like in the last December, we began to have leakages in document. And I just came one day. I said, I can computerize this system. And it was like impossible. And in all that one month, if you go to my civil engineering directorate, mm. uh, everything is from one system. You can't prepare any document. If you prepare any document today in Ministry of Works outside those two Apple desktops, I will not sign it because it will be clear that it didn't come from there. So okay. these things are possible if you put your mind to it. Now, your earlier exposure mm. will be able to show in your future endeavors. Mm. If you are a stranger in managing people, mm. if it's your first time, you will commit a lot of errors. Okay. i tell you what, if I see a performer, I don't ask you where you come from. I work with you. My only interest is in people who deliver results. I care less about where you come from. The sentiment of Oh, where do you come from to get an appointment? Once I see that you have capacity, it's a go. You're my, you're my man. Hmm. Because I will tell you, my governor does not believe in efforts. He believes in results. And as I sit here, even if you are my relation and you can't give me results, sorry, I will let those who will give me results to give me results, then the fruit of the results you can share with me. So that is from my training there. In the customs, if they give you a revenue target and you don't meet it, you won't go and tell people that they didn't do importation. Mm -hmm. Your business is that you are supposed to get the customers, you are supposed to get the importers to come to where you are, create the enabling environment to make it conducive for them to work. So I'm used to that idea that even if the thing is in the rock, go knock it out and bring the result. And that's what it is. Now, you obviously sound like a go-getter and seeing what you've been doing and what we're hearing, it does look like there is a magic wand. So I want to understand what has been the values and principles that you have held so dearly all through life that is helping you to deliver on these things. Maybe someone who's watching you would learn from you and try to imbibe those values and principles. Please share them with us. I tell you the gospel truth. I've seen the greatest thing that has helped me in life and all through life and it's helping me that I hope will help me has been the God factor. Don't allow anyone to deceive you. You cannot as a man achieve anything except God gives you the grace. Mm. And don't let anyone ever deceive you that you cannot become anything except you compromise. You can become all things with God on your side. I am an example. I've stayed through the customs. I did not compromise. I've stayed gotten here. I did not need, I do not need to do anything extra more than just trust God. And some people will say, oh, is it only you that go to church? Listen to me. Knowing God has got nothing to do with you are going to church. Church is a building. Right. The church the Bible is talking about is you. That the gate of hell will not prevail against the church. You are that church. God does not live in the warehouse that becomes the housing where people gather. God can only dwell in you. So you are that church. If you truly trust God and submit to his will, you can do all things. And that factor of God's favor, God's grace, God's direction mm -hmm. has been the central focus. Why? A lot of people wait for events to take place. But I don't. Okay. I seek the face of God in advance and He gives me advance information. So while you be waiting for the thing to take place, I already knew what was going to take place and I lined up so in the So you're direction. pragmatic. Well, call it whatever you like, but the truth is, the central reason for whatever little successes I've attended has been the God factor and God alone. If I claim credits, I'm dishonest. Mm -hmm. 
but I choose not to be dishonest. That is only God who has helped me thus far. Most of the things, like when I came to Ministry of Works, the general assumption was, oh, you were not an engineer, you wouldn't understand the intrigues. But if you are privileged to follow me to any of our inspections, I contend with engineers on sites because I have the details. How did I learn it? God taught me. Okay. <laughs> so I have, I'm not boasting, but I'm being sincere that what has sustained me and is still sustaining me, what has given me grace to do what I do, sometimes I ask myself questions and before I know it, the Holy Spirit will give me the answer. And so I believe in sincerity that if you truly want to succeed, not partial success, the true success is not dependent on the size of what you get, but on the ultimate result, Pastor Bakari used to call it finishing strong and accurate and according to divine pattern, mm. you must have God. If you don't, you okay. will end up in the middle of the road. Thank you very much. So share with us some of the major highlights of the governor's performance two years on. Well, I'll tell you this. If you look at the infrastructural subsector of what this government has done, I can chase up and tell you it's done so well. Hmm. So far, so good. We've started and completed at least 11 roads. And as we speak, 28 are ongoing in Aquaio. They are not stories. They are real. Is that something the governor told me that if you do all the linkages and all the roads and the local government to fulfill the promises, except you do six roads, you will not have succeeded as Commissioner for Works. And it was a tall order. That to the northern part of the state or to the northern, to the right hand side, there must be a dualized road from airports mm -hmm. to east west road. That road was 42.9 kilometers. And when we discovered that one contractor would delay it, we broke it into two. We gave one to Aquatic from airport dualized to Okobudi. From Okobudi we put CC ECC to take it to East West Road. If you go there as we speak, both companies are working. If you come to the center of the state, mm -hmm. His Excellency the Governor is insisting that we must have another dualized road to the seashore. So we started at the corner quick corner. What some people they run us we call the coming man. It's a corner quick corner. A corner quick corner, 19 kilometers takes us to 18 and roundabout. At 18 and roundabout, if you go right, you have a 29 kilometer dualized road that will take you to New York on East West Road. If you come back to Etina, you have another 19.8 kilometer road to allies that drives through Etina, through France to Eke. And at Talon Bridge, it terminates there. You now enter the remodeling of Eke. When His Excellency the Governor came, Eke was the dirtiest place you could ever think of, and it was housing Moby. We started the cleaning up. If you go to Atabon, once you cross into Atabon, you see a new Eke. It's amazing. When that remodeling is completed, when we get to the post office on Liverpool Road, we will go back to Braceville and link that road up to Marina. We inherited a road that was virtually abandoned because of funding. It's called the Eke Ibra Road, 19 kilometers. That road, as we speak, has been taken up by this government and completed and commissioned. If you now come to the western part, or what I would call the eastern part of the state, we are in the process of getting an investor to build, operate, and transfer, though a federal road. We grew all the necessary book works to start from a back, take a dualized road, 47.2, 47.5 7 kilometers through Paraqua to a so if you look at that picture, we would have enveloped the states from all sides. If you go to the right, if you go to the left, you have dualized road to east-west road. If you come to the center, you have double portion. If you drive on that dualized road to Etinan, and at Etinan, you can break, you can make a choice to go right or go left. That takes you. And then the east-west road, when you enter Eke, on a dualized, remodel Eke road, you get to Marina, you can get to Ibn, which is the seashore, I think, mobile. Off Ekelibron Road, we're building a superhighway. 
The Ibn Dif simple that we discuss every day that a lot of works have been done, you can't get to the seashore. Please let me say this for emphasis. We are not building we are not building Ibaka. Deep seaport. Deep we are building Ibo. Ibaka is a location, it's a sport. Ibo is a stretch. We do not want to concentrate on a location because we're not just building a deep seaport. Container terminal will be there, the deep seaport will be there, we will have industrial park in that place. So it's going to be a whole stretch. That 55.1 kilometer road will take you from it's road one to Uyaro. Remember the same Uyaro yeah. that we told you about from airport to Okobudi to Uyaro. So this super highway will bust again at Uyaro. So if you're doing business on that super highway with eight lanes, what you will simply have is that you have a choice to come to a gate on Marina and join East West Road and go to Rivers, go to Bayelsa, go to Warri. You also have a choice to go through the super highway, come at Uyaro and join East West Road. So these are the major superstructures that when completed, the state is open up. But How I, long do you think it would take to complete these structures? It will not take too long because one, again, even on road is completed. A tin and donor you will be delivered before the tenth anniversary. God on the side. And um, the airport Okobodi mm -hmm. is gearing up. Sir. Due um, CECC Okobodi Uyaron, uh, at the moment, if not for the rains, at the um, kilometer eight, mm -hmm. it's been opened up. Through a thick forest, no road had ever existed there. Every local government in Akwaibo, by the time His Excellency returns for his campaign for second term, will have at least a road or two. I can show you some. We are about using Afra to complete one 15.1 kilometers that will lead Akwaibo to Aruchu. We've gone to Oboro, Canada, didn't enjoy a lot of road presence. We've almost completed one that was commissioned, even though we're tidying up the bridge that leads Aguaibo from the Toyno to Igueresa in Abu State. If you come to Uyo, is everywhere, at Dana Ford, everywhere. If you come to Nsiratai, we just commissioned the road that links Nsiratai to Ibe Sikwa Suta. We've just awarded a road in Ibe Sikwa Suta. Udomoko had not had road in other local government. We've awarded nine kilometers, the Asakitarian Road. If you go to Mbo, that abandoned bridge, the Etebiye the, the one bridge, His Excellency has just released resources, the contractor is back on site. If you go to Oron, Oron could also be called a remodel city because we had the first intervention where we cleaned up Post Office Road, where we cleaned up uh, Efian Street, Efian Lane, Bassi Lane, around the Technical College, and we went back on the second phase to do the market road. And, by the time we finish intervention two in Oron, if you have been away for a long time, you won't recognize the place. Mm -hmm. And so, if you go to Mbarene, there was no road when we went for consultation, our vehicles couldn't pass. But as we speak, five kilometer road has been completed. In Ona, Mbaoka road, five kilometer completed. We are about to build a ceramic factory, they call it Bidang, 13 kilometer is almost completed. Uh, currently, we're building another road from to Ikwe. And when you get to East West Road, on that Twilight Road from Donoyo, if you cross to the other side, we're building an industrial park at the end of that road. It's a road that has been awarded not less than four times by NDDC. This government has taken the bull by the hand to do a nice part of that road and do the other single thing to the seashore. It's called Donoyo Ikwe Odio Road. When the process of cleaning that road up to make it that people will have access to the seashore. Again, um, which other local government there? SNK, we just awarded a 18.9 kilometer road in SNK. Um, if you go to Nsurubium, we've awarded a 9.4 kilometer road in Nsurubium. I was discussing with the leaders of Nsat Ibo that we need to have a presence there. What His Excellency has directed me is that in the midst of the scarce resources, every local government must have a test of what it is to have modern infrastructure. We've gone to in the local government, it was one of the first we built 3.5 kilometer 
in Nzuru Kodom. That's the only road that today I'm considering with the approval of His Excellency to go and link that road to either Usei Karamama on the left or uh, Kalabai to road because we're not building any road that terminates in the middle of nowhere. Every road must be linked to the other so that it can bring up economic activity. So across the states, generally, I can tell you if you go to Oruwan and Nogu government, we're building about four roads there. Three, two currently are ongoing. One, he called a Kaide, he called a Kori Kori Britam, had a little delay, we had to change the contractor. From Ikori Britam to a cafe, to Ikori Banafa, and Karafa local government is ongoing by Al Modal. Ikori Kara on East West Road, coming through it in the Slip Bukuru to Ikori Britam by Hamakop is ongoing. So, all over the place there is a construction site. It could have been more if we had more resources. But in the midst of the recession of the last two years, his Excellency, the Governor has so well managed the resources that all these projects are all ongoing. Thank so you. for me, infrastructural development in Aquaibo. He stands up. Okay, now since we are still on the issues of the state. So there has been this controversy surrounding the location of three industries in a local government area of Aquaibom State. Now is that fair? As the Honorable Commissioner for Works of Aquaibom State, what do you have to say about that? Now let me tell you a little story and I will tell you that the state government will only require people to provide the enabling environment. Take for the coconut uh, refinery that was about to be built. It was an abandoned land that was under contention between his Nobori Korabasi and Pareni. And His Excellency, the governor now said, all right, hand over this land, let's give it value. And he imported coconut to be planted there to build a refinery. That the cost of even what comes out will even be more expensive than oil. The people went as far as almost killing the plant drivers. As we speak, that land is under contention. Korabasi people, Pareni people, and this is a swamp that they were not even farming on. So if 20 factories are in Ona, I think the race of Aquarium should go as Ona people. What have they done to attract these investors? Let me tell you, this government is not going to go into direct industrialization. It's to provide, provide the enabling environment suitable. I tell you the truth. Go ask the man at Flower Mill and Bulk, as he has started that construction, he has not paid one couple compensation, and nobody has to stop them. So if People are attracted. They shouldn't be offended with what has happened in Ona. It's all the investors have found that in that location, they will not be harassed. What they should do, our leaders should call our youths and our women together. Let's provide the enabling environment. And don't also forget the basic economics that they, we were taught in school. I'm sure you still remember that industries are attracted to where you have the raw material. If we want to build a ceramic factory, are you saying we should go to Mbokat or glass factory and get their sand? and go and build it in Mbo. The cost of transportation of that raw materials would have wiped out the profit. He got a big and has massive deposit of clay. Are you saying well, if there's a factory being private sector driven, the investors will go there. When we needed to do farming, cocoa, rice, we didn't go anywhere more than go to Ine. Where we have the land that is suitable for it. So bulk of the agricultural investment is where? In the local government. Because the people gave the governor the land and they allowed the environment to be peaceful. When Her Excellency, the wife of the governor, needed to plant a salad, she went to Okoma. And Jerry of Bolt, and Sebastian, the rest, got the youth together and they gave the land. There are people in our state who are not doing anything with their land, but they will not see the government to the blood. So what do you expect government to do? Investors will always be attracted to where they have the raw materials, to where they have bees, to where they have the necessary facilities, to where if there is a crisis, a leader speaks and the people pull out. If you have more factories, come to now. If you are disturbed, we will put our youths in check and they hear us and they listen to us. So every leader who probably is offended by the factories going to now, my advice to you is put your youths in check and the investors will be attracted. Thank you very much, sir. When we had the vehicle factory in it too. The people were waiting for overcompensation. Probably that discouraged the investors and may continue to discourage investors because I deal with facts and figures. Let's make our state investor friendly and the people will do what?
Thank you very much, sir. So while still on that, could you please kindly comment on the fact that the Governor's Lodge in Lagos is going to be constructed, despite all the agitation of some people that it is a sheer waste of money in a recession that we carry such monies out of the state when we should be bringing monies into the state. I'll give you three simple answers. As a leader, you see ahead of your people. Shouldn't you also, as a leader, listen to what the people I'm say? going to tell you one thing. Okay. Those who form that opinion, first, they lied to our people that the value of that project was 9.6 billion. 9.1 billion. 9 mm -hmm. There is no way the lot would have been 9.1, so they lied. That was the total budget of Minister of Housing in the supplementary budget. In the original budget of 2017, that budget had only 500 million. It had not even been released. In the supplementary, they had 700. It was a proposal. So the funding had not even taken place. And now what is wrong? In having your presence in the headquarters of business in Nigeria, let me ask you the simple question. Is Nigeria very rich to have embassies? Our lot in Abuja and Lagos are like Aquaibong embassies where a first-time contact will determine who we truly are. It's ignorance that makes people speak that way. Otherwise, Nigeria has no business maintaining embassies all over the world. When people want to see you, who have never been to this part of the world, who may even be afraid because of the stories they hear about the Niger Delta, the violence in the South South, would be comfortable first to see you in Lagos or in Abuja, interface with you, and then will receive some level of courage and encouragement to come to your place. Now, I ask a simple question. Aquaibum is not the poorest state in Nigeria. Most states in Nigeria today maintain a lot in Lagos. So those who are speaking are not speaking from the point of strength. What they have done, and if you have noticed, is that everything His Excellency the Governor has done, they have criticized it. You don't criticize the one governor has done right. The one, even if there are issues, you should criticize with facts. Starting with the basis that 9.1 billion was it. And then it's like in my ministry, there's a proposal of 100 billion for roads. It depends on what is available to be released. So if there is a proposal of government, have you seen if the construction has started or not? And what in the first place is wrong? In Aquaibo, saying that the lot we had before, the biomico, uh, bio has become overpolluted, it's become an industrial area. Let's repackage that place, rent it out, earn some revenue, and move. And incidentally, the cost of the land that Aquaibo State has already in the Kui is even higher than the value of what we're going to put there because the land had already been acquired. So when you add that value, you are adding value to Aquaibo. Now, if you have a bail land in the Kui, over the years it's adding value, and you now put a property on it, is that property still not a property of Aquaibo State Government? Will that property go with Governor Udomi Manuel? Will when he leaves office in 2023, will he take that property to his father's house? The answer is no. I want to appeal to our brothers. Let's criticize when we have the facts right. Well. When it makes a whole lot of sense. When Obon Victor Ta, the then governor between 1999 and 2007 was going to build the airport, they said all manners of things, though we had Calabar Airport. Do you know that there was a time when there was no link between Aquaibom and Cross River because of the collapsed Federal Road Calabaitu? So what would have happened to us as a state when Aba was shut down by road, Port Harcourt was shut down, there was no entry into Aquaibom except through this airport that Abon Victor Tabio. May God bless Abon Victor Ta. When God's Labor Bible was going to give us a new law, there was nothing they didn't call him. But is that loss not a pride to acquire one today? Now, let me ask my simple question before I keep quiet. Why is nobody talking about the 30-story building that we're erecting for to celebrate the 30th anniversary at the old Uyo market that will at least give us a partial accommodation if the international oil companies were to relocate to acquire one? I ask this simple question. We're saying the IOC should come to Hawaii, where would they be accommodated? Where are the buildings, even the accommodations in Aiken, where they will be accommodated? Now the governor is in the process 
whether private investor or government, to build a thirty story building, which will be the first. It's, nobody is giving him praise for it. You see how cheap the critic of government has become. Governor said to support the green or the super eagles and offer that money that they are making noise about is about 14 million. And there was no name they didn't call the governor. Did it make sense also to you? That even when a private Nigerian said every goal they score in Cameroon, he will give $20,000. Nobody said anything about it. I think there is an error in the manner of criticism of those who write. And incidentally, there are not more than three or four of them. I can count them. So I think Agua will be like getting tired of the blind criticisms. And in no distant time, they will fizzle out. We're going to move forward. And I tell you, that even myself sitting here as just commissioner was going to listen to all the stories we used to do it like this. Okay, if you used to do it like this, what result did you get? If you are getting the same result, but you now desire a different result, then you must do something different. A Kwaibun is qualified, okay, overqualified to have a good law in Lagos. He has a projection because that is the headquarters of business in Nigeria. It's just like New York. Every company of importance in America must have a presence in Europe. Abuja is like Washington. We go there for political reasons. If we are able to have a lot in Abuja that does not even add economic value, why shouldn't we have a lot in Lagos? Where most foreign investors who arrive in Nigeria first will come in contact with us to discuss with us. Okay, now some other divides say that the governor is not prioritizing rights that that would have come later on, not when we are in recession. What would you say about that? What has the governor done in the recession? While other states are not paying salary, he has paid salary. What has he not done in the recession? In the midst of recession, he has brought investors to build industries. What has the governor not prioritized right? In the midst of recession, he's doing roads, and some of them are denying the roads, and they are driving on the roads. It doesn't make sense. What is expected is that the leader sees what the lead does not see. You know, the information a leader has, most followers will not have. If you read through most of those things, there are a lot of people who sincerely do not even understand the dynamics of the argument. Should I tell you what it is? It is over-politicization of a statehood. Most of those write-ups are absolutely sponsored by the opposition in that way. It's not based on the opinion of the people. It's the same write up by a few individuals. I can call their name. They're not more than four or five, the same people. Every day, the same people. These are just the boys who keep on writing the same thing. And I'm telling you today, if you follow the commentary system, people are tired of reading them. The commentary is dropping. So very soon they will lose relevance. No man has the ability to bring the other man down, especially those of us who trust God. God brought me here. An assignment and that assignment will fulfill nothing. You write on those pages. I quite when people are reading through the lines. The more you write, the more people ask questions. People are they writing about this? But you know one thing I found out? The more they write about me, especially their falsehood, the more intelligent people are asking questions. Let's get to see this man. There must be something about this man. So they are making me extremely popular. <laughs> so how is your relationship with your colleagues? My colleagues, which of my colleagues, other commissioners? Other commissioners. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. So you are a team and you're working out together. Absolutely. Absolutely. A team. So what more should we expect from you? We're rounding this off about now. So what more should we expect from you, from this administration? Do you think appointment should people should keep trusting what you're doing? Or should they give up? Not just me. My boss, the governor, mm -hmm. is the one appointment people gave a mandate. Mm -hmm. I'm just a subunit of his mandate. I'm here to interpret a section of what he gets. So what are quite what people should expect from His Excellency the Governor, whom they gave his mandate, is that notwithstanding the economic recession, he would deliver on his campaign promises. Mm. He's already delivering on them. He will continue to de deliver on them. And let me tell you, no amount of empty criticisms would derail him. The man is absolutely focused. Talk and should I, tell you, should, should I tell you one thing I was talking about? He doesn't read those things. He's focused Don't you to think deliver. if he was actually reading, maybe he would get a new perspective? What kind of perspective? What he is doing as governor is beyond the reasoning of some level of people. So as far as I'm concerned, he should stay focused, deliver on his mandate, 
at the end of four years, unless a quite bomb people will give him another four years, at the end of eight years, the same people will celebrate him. Thank you very much, sir, for coming on Passion TV. Thank you. And finally, talk to our youths today. Talk to us. I mean, there's been this general call that everyone should get entrepreneurial, and that's not an easy road to ply on. Honestly, it isn't. So, talk to us. Encourage some people who are actually doing things to make a quite more proud. Well, uh, I think that by best, all humans, our politicians, even though they may not manifest it, we are all political animals. And two, all humans are entrepreneurs at their different level. What has been lacking is the capacity to stay through the course. I want to tell the youth that good things don't come cheap. Don't start a thing and when you face challenges, you give up. If you live your life and you don't face challenges and you don't overcome them, you are like a man who wants to live on the testimony of God. No Christian is strong until you have your personal encounter, your personal testimonies. Challenges are part of life. Don't give up as a youth because things have not worked there. I see a lot of them who are close to me and tell them, look, if you see a man who has no story about how he came about where he is, that man must not be real. Every one of us have a story. One of my friends came visiting me from Baradin. We were friends from secondary school. And I remember how I was a DJ when his father was made clan head. I'm talking about 1983, 84, school of business of the second. And I did a DJ job, and when I went there, nobody gave me a chance. So I got to Baradin, that's on the school, that primary school, and did a good job, made some money, and used the money well. So, they see you because you are here today and say, oh, you started here. No, 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 no. The best way to get to the top is to go through those turbulent moments, to go through those challenges. It will fashion your life and create stability. I tell people, if you give me 10 million naira tomorrow, I won't change my lifestyle. I'll be the same. If you give me 5 million, if you don't give me at all, I'll be the same thing. I don't wear clothes because I have money, just because I like clothes. It's always been like that. If you go through my album or my days in Latin Rain Assembly, my three sons and myself was every Sunday to church. It was, it's just a lifestyle. It's not because I got here and get, get excited because I'm commissioner. Every young man must have a story to tell about his success. And that story is a story of how God helped you to overcome your challenges. Don't surrender in the face of challenges. Give it time, be patient, remain focused. God will come on your side. It's a question of time. And let me also tell those who believe in the true God that there is no one that God had worked with who didn't pay a price for success. And if your success is without a price, it's not true success. Thank you very much, sir. I guess this is the part where we say please continue with your duties. Passion TV has been glad to have you. Thank you. Thank you for having me.